your actions, not your circumstances. I'm sure you've heard this before, it pops up now and then through pop culture, superhero movies and the like. It's a nice tidy statement. Everyone has the same level of control over their destiny. Your actions are the most powerful tool. Through action, you can change your life. You can be anything, you can do anything. It's a shame that it's a convenient lie. Told to us by those that are really in control, all through our lives, by our parents, our teachers, our employers, our government, by God. To society, you are only as acceptable as your behaviour. You can change your identity, but the very circumstance of your existence? That one is less feasible. The idea is to wound people. Psychologically wound them through this classist propaganda. From as early an age as possible so that they never learn who they truly are. The poor aren't poor because they're unmotivated, or stupid, or lazy. The poor are poor because they are poor. Their only mistake was being born wrong. They were born under circumstances which now define their future. As a human being, you are not defined by the summation of the circumstances of your birth. You are so much more than that. But as a member of a sociological class, if you were born into poverty, then you are systemically made to struggle and suffer at the whims of the wealthy aristocracy. You don't have control. You don't have power. What else is left under the crushing weight of this realisation other than to resort to violence? What other option do you have? If you won't be given it, then you need to take it. But even then, absolute power corrupts absolutely, no matter the circumstances of your birth. Even royalty can be pawns next to those who are able to control a narrative, to control life. But to achieve your ideals, you need power. This is the politics of the world. Blood is the price of progress. It is the ink in which history is written. This is what Final Fantasy Tactics is about. Welcome to Ivelisse, one of the greatest fantasy worlds ever conceived. Final Fantasy Tactics was released in 1997, months after Final Fantasy VII. I got it via a certain means, since it was not released in Europe. I can't even play my legit copy of it because it doesn't work on my pal PlayStation. I imported it from America back when you didn't need to remortgage your house to afford retro games, just because I wanted the box. But I got it back then and I loved it. I love it. This is one of the best Final Fantasy games. It's not a mainline game, but its quality is right up there with them. This is actually one of my all-time favourite fantasy stories. At the time of making this video, this is the darkest Final Fantasy story in my opinion. It's certainly the most mature. It's one of the most overtly political games in the entire franchise's run. I actually put this one ahead of Final Fantasy VII in terms of its brutal political messaging. But I'm not exactly going to be playing the original version. Instead, what I'm doing is I'm playing a modded version which contains a few quality of life updates and bug fixes. It's based on the PS1 version, but critically, it has the retranslated War of the Lions script, which honestly has some of the best writing in any video game. This is the first game that's set in a kingdom called Ivelisse, which honestly is one of the better things to come out of Final Fantasy. There's a few games that are set in Ivelisse, but I, it's a shame that they don't do more of it nowadays. I really, really, really would like to travel back there, especially in a modern game with like the fidelity that we have now. The game has a really in-depth and complicated backstory, which is explained through kind of like text dumps, but what I'll probably do is put together a little bit that just goes through the entire backstory up until this point. I'm not going to open with it because I don't want this series to open with a ton of preamble, so let's just jump right in and see what this game has in store for us.
Final Fantasy Tactics! <laughs> the Lion War of the Lions, which is the, the silly name for the mod. So there's, there's the story so far. Already we're seeing themes of history being forgotten and history being written by the church and the victor. Which is, you know, a well-known fact that... Well, we'll get into it, but a well-known fact is that history is written by the victor, right? Nuance of history is lost as time goes on. 
Which is a really interesting premise for a fantasy story, I think. Ramza is our main character's name. He was born on February 15, just like me. No, 15. Oh, the nostalgia straight away. <laughs> oh, Father, abandon not your wayward children of evilies, but deliver us from our sins, that we might know salvation. Lady Avelia, it is time. I'll not be much longer, Agrius. Your escort has already arrived, Majesty. Please. Heed the good lady's words, Highness. You must hurry. Still in here, are you? It's been the better part of an hour. Gafgarian, you forget yourself, sir. You're in the presence of a princess. Mayhap bowed heads would less offend. You would do well to waste less time on idle pleasantries. I see even the noble order of the Orven Sky cannot rid itself of vulgar knaves. A guard captain in these raids sodden hinterlands ought not expect chivalry. We are in the employ of the order, not of it. Our pay does not cover trite courtesies to the likes of you. Govern your tongue. Oh, the writing is amazing. <laughs> the writing in this game is so good. Enough. Let it, let's be on our way.
The father watch over you, child. And you, Elder. Milady, the enemy is upon us. Duke Galtana's men? We are paid for this. Time to earn our keep. What is it, Ramsa? You have both been getting paid to do a job? I am a knight no longer. Just another sellsword. Right then, to battle! Deliver us, O oh Lord. They bear the crest of the Black Lion. Duke Galtona must be mad. Does he mean to start a war? You there, wench! You cannot hope to defeat us. You will surrender the princess. If not, well, I would hate to see anything happen to that pretty face of yours. A head on assault? These swords of Galtana. Lackwits, one and all. In that case, we should be able to handle this without you, Gafgarian. Mayhap you could, but there's no money to be made in that. Lad, Ramza, with me! Kill them all! Leave no man standing! You would have us slaughter them? Are you mad? Kill them here and you'll have played right into Duke Galtana's hands. We need, we need only put them to rout. I find dead men rout more easily. Oh, this game is incredible! <laughs> Feast on the soul! Shadow Blade! The music's so good and the sound effects and everything's amazing! What does salve do? Remove several status ailments. Damn, 60? Let's see, 62, 59, 
This guy's pretty dangerous. Can I move over to you? I cannot. This guy's pretty dangerous though. Let's get this guy. Okay, they're gonna go that way. I love these tactical RPGs. They're like slow and methodical, but I really like them. I don't play enough of them. Like this is my favorite one. I'll get more into the development history of this game a bit later on, but this is made by the same people that made Ogre Battle and Tactics Ogre. Games I've never played. But it's the same it's the same writers and the same director. I'm probably going to play the Tactics Ogre remake after this one maybe. We'll see. But there's all sorts of like tactical RPGs I still haven't played, like new ones, like Triangle Strategy and stuff like that. I need to get my shit together and play more games. The first two battles in this game were just kind of tutorial battles. It eases you into it quite a bit, to be honest. Like right now I can only control- I can- can I can only control Ramza. But I get a big team of people soon. He's beefy, isn't he? Look out Lad, or Rad, or whatever his name was. Unhand me! The princess! This way, hurry up and try making a little less noise. I'll not take orders from you. You've quite the mouth on you, princess. Hold there. You're too late. Don't take it too hard, though. Perhaps this is the Lord's will. Take it up with him. This cannot be. Talita? He lives? But why does he serve under the banner of Duke Cortana? Records of the hero deleters first appear one year before the outbreak of the War on the Lions. The loss of the Fifty Years' War saw knights returning from the front stripped of livelihood. Their fealty to the crown and nobility abandoned. Many became rogues and traitors, men donning the thief's cloak and plotting treason against the crown. It was a time of great unrest for Ivelisse. Murder and theft were commonplace. Many were the young adventurer and mage who stepped forward to counter this threat. Of such, the city of Garoland too saw its share. 
Chapter 1 The Meager The Royal Military Academy at Garland. Another Wayne was struck last night on its way to Egros. The Corpse Brigade again. I wonder where all this leads. Delita, what do you make of this? I'm not sure. I have my guesses, but I'm listening. I think Duke Clark is coming to Garland. Duke Clark? Why? Not just the Duke. The Marquis Elmdor de Limbury, too. Marquis Marquis. That's pronounced Marquis. I'm pretty sure that is pronounced Marquis. That's not Marquis. <laughs> That's the first I've heard of it. This is not the sound of a safe visit. State visit. All of Ivelisse is in turmoil. The Order's supposed to be keeping things under control, but the fact is, they number too few. And they mean to bolster their numbers with us? Alright, everybody form up. The Order of the Northern Sky has an assignment for its Knight's Apprentice. As I'm sure you're already aware, the number of brigands roaming Galleon is on the rise. Among them, the Corpse Brigade, a seditious lot of a grudge against the Crown. Rogues such as they must be dealt with. The Order has been commanded to undertake an operation to eliminate the Brigade, an operation of a grand scale. We will not be acting alone. The Order will be joined by, among others, His Excellency, Duke Clark's Royal Guard, stationed at Egros. This will leave Egros Castle on demand. Your task will be to proceed there and support us from the rear by bolstering its defences. The time to take up arms is upon you, young apprentices. I've just received word that a band of thieves routed our knights flees here. I've just received word that a band of thieves routed by our knights flees here to Garaland, seeking refuge. We will move to stop them and finish the task of our brothers. You, young apprentices, will accompany us. This is but a squall before the storm of battle. Prepare yourselves at once. Dismissed. I will save my progress. Okay, what have we got? Bruce, J.I. David, Leticia, Aditha and Dionysia. You all suck. <laughs> You're all not very good at all. You're getting replaced pretty quickly, to be honest. I have a plan for my party anyway. This is another one of those games that you can break really easily, so I'm going to try my best not to. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't matter who I use, they're all getting replaced anyway by better people that I can name. we here? We Muppets, is it? Our locks went and turned for the better. Alright, lads. Cut through these ones and we're as good as fled. We'll make quick work of them. And don't be leaving no squealers behind, neither.
Okay, I think we're going to send two... Two over to the right, two over to the left, I guess. Careful, Ramza. Remember, the well-aimed thrust pierces the mail. Don't patronise me, Delita. We Beowulfs know our way around a battlefield. Beowulf, was it? Hair, hair to the net. Hair to the noble house Beowulf, I'd wager. Looks like we have ourselves some apprentices from the academy. Well, highborn Muppets is still Muppets. Lay down your arms or die clutching them. None will mourn your passing. And you mean to make us do that then? You're in far over your little heads. So now we're a year in the past, he's not quite as strong as he was. Alright, cool, we've taken out the chemist straight away, that's good. You know what the best thing about this game is? It has the job system! Woo! <laughs> Everyone knows how much I like the job system. You see it popping up whenever you attack JP. It's job points. You buy abilities with them. This is going surprisingly well so far. Now you're trapped! <laughs> Where are you going? So this game actually does have permadeath, so you see that number two above the guy? That will count down every single time his turn rolls around, you see at the bottom where it says CT? That's that's kind of like the ATB system in a way. Each turn it goes up a little bit depending on what their speed is. And every time his turn rolls around, that will tick down. When it goes to zero, he'll turn into a crystal or a treasure chest. Crystals let you pick it up and heal, or get their abilities, and treasure chests, they'll drop like an item that they had equipped. But if any of your... Well, if, if say, like, Ramza crystallizes, then it's game over. But if any of the other lesser people crystallize, then it's permadeath, they're gone forever. And I'm probably going to play it with permadeath on, just so you know. I'm probably not going to restart the game if that happens. As much as I'll want to. <laughs> Just to keep things a bit more interesting. I'm also not going to be breaking the game in any way. You can break this game really easily. So I'm going to try not to grind too much. I'm not going to like immediately overpower everything. I'm probably not going to use the guest characters either. Because it is a well-known fact that the guest characters in this game are broken. <laughs> Especially one specific guest character that you get near the end. I am going to use Agrius though, just because she's cool. I have a plan for Agrius. I kind of already have my team worked out, to be honest, <laughs> if all goes well and according to plan. Getting there might be hard because, again, I'm not going to grind. Because you can just blow this game wide open, like, straight away, just by attacking yourself. 
Like, you can just attack your own people and you get job points for it. So just keep attacking and healing and you're sorted. <laughs> you can just farm that way. I'm not going to do that though. Alright, let's move you out of the way. Go on, Delita, get him! Or, or don't. Don't is good too. You do like no damage. I'm leveling up like a real boy. work would see them die old in bed yet they choose instead this early grave why persist in such folly two thousand gill mithril knife and a phoenix down So we need to sort out our party, don't we? First of all, all of you can probably just just leave, go away. All right, so we need first of all to get rid of all of you. This works. <laughs> I should have saved it first. Oh well. Warriors Guild, we need three people. Let's start with a very brave person. Oh. So the bravery is randomised, but I want someone with high bravery. At least above like 80. This could take a... Oh, I buttons. Stupid hands. This could take a while, <laughs> but it'll be worth it. This is the only min-maxing I'm doing. I do actually need someone with high faith as well, so if I find someone with really high faith, I'll get them too. I'm looking for at least above 80 though. 70 might work.
Any second now. I can't remember if you get these guys with weaponry or not. Okay, I think that's as high as it's going, so... We're going to call you... Teal! We're using my Final Fantasy 1 characters! <laughs> so you're going to be our Black Mage! Eventually. Okay, so do you come pre-equipped with stuff? You do? Okay, cool. That means I can just sell everything. What else can I sell? Sell you! Sell you. I have three Phoenix Stones? Straight off the bat? Cool. Okay, we need a high bravery boy. Seventy bravery, something like that will do. is it? <laughs> it's been mean. There we go. Right, 70s. 70s what I'm sticking with because we're going to be here all night otherwise. You are Fritz. We all remember Fritz, the MVP. <laughs> it's very likely that this guy will still be the MVP. Because he's going to be our monk and monks are stupidly overpowered on this game. Or rather, they're more going to be archetypes, like he's going to be our, like, melee DPS, I guess is probably more accurate. We need a female with high faith. Seventy. I want seventy. So essentially the reason I'm doing this is the higher your bravery, the more chance you have of your kind of reaction abilities like counter attacks and things like that happening. And the higher your faith, the more magic damage you do and the more healing you receive from magic. This isn't the easiest game in the world if you don't go out of your way to break it, so this is important. Do. 
You are Flora. I think I'll do for now. You can actually have a spot for one more person. The party, the max party is five. But you tend to only be able to use four people for a while. Plus our fifth member is going to be Agrius anyway, so... I think this will do for now. Okay, Teal, you need to change your job. Because you are a chemist for now, because you... So the way that you unlock jobs on this game is you have to get certain job levels of other jobs. So if I get a level 2 chemist, that would unlock the white mage and black mage. You can stay as a squire. You also need to be a chemist for now. And I need to go to the Outfitter. I guess I need to buy you a dagger. Awesome! Let's also buy a rod and an oak staff for when we do unlock the caster jobs. And some more potions. Cool. I was expecting to not be able to afford any of this. Okay, cool. So ability. Learn. Stone is always a good first one to learn. Phoenix Downs. Very useful. <laughs> Tio, you also need to... Uh, I want to get you move plus one as quickly as possible, so... Fritz, let's give you stone. JP boost is also useful. I don't use it too much, but... Everyone knowing Phoenix Downs is going to be huge. <laughs> At least early on. So you get two, two main abilities. So the first ability is locked to your job. The second ability you get from another job. You have a reaction ability, a command ability and a movement ability. We're ready to start the game. <laughs> All of the tutorials are out of the way. Let's go to the tavern. Let's feed some rumours. Brigandry is on the rise across the land and Galleon has by no means been spared. So this is where you kind of get the backstory and, you know, more information about the story. It's interesting stuff. Wayne's are struck and pillaged. High-ranking officials taken at sword point. Most of the incidents of this past six months are, are believed to be the work of a company of felons and former sellswords known as the Corpse Brigade. It is oft said, the only good brigand is a dead brigand, and the Order of the Northern Sky would like naught more than to see the brigade made corpses for true. But as yet, it is all the knighthood can do to keep the outlaws in check. The health of King Dondoria III has been subject of concern since his collapse at the birthday celebration of Prince Orionus. The Board of Chamberlains has since announced that the King has regained consciousness and his fever is broken, but will yet require several weeks of quietude and bed rest in order to recover. Many speculate that it may be some months before the King resumes his official duties, however, Queen Luveria and her retainers have long since been in charge of most affairs of state 
and thus a few problems were anticipated during the king's absence. And the Fifty Years' War. The half-century of conflict between Ivelisse and Ordalia is today known as the Fifty Years' War. The beginning of the Fifty Years' War can be traced to the death of Ordalia's King Devan III and his failure to name a successor. His cousin, Veroy IV, V, VI, Veroy VI was next in line for the throne. However, King Dinamda II of Ivelisse, the uncle of Devan III, proclaimed himself the rightful heir and declared war on Ordalia. However, this was merely a pretense to justify the invasion of the neighbouring Ordalia province of Zelmonia. Once an independent state, it had been annexed by Ordalia nearly a century prior. Ivelisse had since been aiding the province in an effect to weaken Ordalia, an effort that ultimately failed. Tired of Ordalian rule, the Zelmonian leadership and nobility secretly petitioned Ivelisse to make a, take a more direct hand at their liberation. After a victory in Zelmonia, the Ivelisian armies marched and marched. The Ivelisian armies marched on the Ordalian capital of Viura. As fate would have it, Dinamda II succumbed to fatal illness on the road. The momentary confusion amongst Ivelisse's troops gave Ordalia the opportunity it needed to regroup, and Veroy VI succeeded in pushing Ivelisians back as far as Zelmonia. The resulting impasse would not be broken until the Romandan's army invasion two years hence. Romanda, a powerful military state lying across the Reina Strait, marched on Ivelisse at the behest of Veroy VI. A blood relation of the Romandan nobility. However, Dinamda II's successor, Dinamda IV, was the fearless warrior, personally leading his men against the combined might of Romanda and Ordalia. This, along with an outbreak of the Black Death in Romanda, forced the Romandan army to withdraw after only three years. Two military orders worth of particular mention in this conflict are the Order of the Northern Sky, led by Knight Gallant Barboneth Beowulf, that's Ramses' dad, and that of the Southern Sky, led by Sidolphus Orlandu, that's Sid, also known as the Thunder God. After countless victories at home, these two orders had been poised to advance in Ordalia. However, the protracted conflict had begun to take its toll on domestic morale. Peasant uprisings and revolts through Ivelisse and Ordalia, and Ordalia forced both countries to send their troops home to pacify their own citizens, resulting in another draw. It was Demanda, Denanda's the fourth sudden death by malady that broke the stalemate. Although some claim that he was murdered, his successor, Andoria III, that's the current king, was ill-suited to the throne and left the governing of Ivelisse to his queen and retainers without Denamba the fourth leadership. The armies of Ivelisse have little prayer of preventing Veroy IV's successor, Prince Leonard, from defeating the troops stationed in Zelmonia and advancing into Ivelisse proper. Despite the valiant efforts on the northern and southern orders, Ivelisse failed to repel Prince Leonard's invasion of Zeltenia. Ivelisse's leaders soon began looking for a peaceful alternative. In the end, both states agreed that prolonging the war would prove mutually detrimental, and a pact was signed, allowing each nation to return to addressing domestic strife. An equal peace in name. It was a reality of de in reality a defeat for Ivelisse. So Ivelisse lost the Fifty Years' War. I'll, I'll explain this in more detail with like pictures later, <laughs> but Ivelisse essentially lost the war. And the Order of the Northern Sky and the Order of the Southern Sky kind of had to, you know, they had to like retreat to keep the peace back at home, which is essentially a defeat, right? Because they've had to withdraw from Zeltenia, um, which has caused a economic issue, we'll say, in Ivelisse. The economy of Ivelisse was brought to the very brink of ruin, and it struggled to pay reparations to its former enemies and to repay loans taken from neighbouring states to fund its war effort. Soldiers returning from the front found themselves without pay, and entire orders of knights were summarily discharged from service. The swelling ranks of the unemployed did little to retreat, to relieve the people's distrust of the crown and the nobility. So, none of the none of the knights that fought in the Fifty Years' War could be paid, and they've returned back, and the nobilities just abandoned them completely, which is what's led to. Brigandry being on the rise across the land. And Galliode has not been spared. So the knights have formed what's called the Corpse Brigade. Which is kind of what Act 1 is all about. 
But we'll do more into Act 1 next time, and I am excited. And I look forward to seeing you there. Bye bye!